Happy Friday, everybody. This is Deb Barrett, and I'm here with Jackie. Hi, Jackie. How are you? I'm great, great. Excited to be back from High Point with all this great stuff to show you guys today. Oh, my gosh, yeah. So let's just dive right in. This Friday's Take 10 is, of course, the first look at High Point Spring Market. Um, and we're really excited, as Jackie said, to show you some of the really amazing stuff we saw. Um, first off, I guess, first slide. This is Tebow's new Bridgehampton collection in the sort of spring colorway. I thought it would um, look fresh and bright for springy, but it's also done in black and white, which is much more sophisticated and, and also very stunning. Yeah, we're going to talk more about that further down down the road, right, Dan? Yeah, down <clears throat> the road. Okay, so Jackie. First, we've got Tropical Takeover. Honest to God, every showroom in High Point had a tropical um, vibe in some way, um, shape, or another. And I am personally really loving it. Um, it's very sophisticated, thinking more sort of jungle-centric rather than like pure tropical, but all these beautiful deep greens, bright greens, all the way up to like chartreuse, you know, I mean, just mm -hmm. very wide range blues, grays mixed in. Um, it, oops. Go ahead. <clears throat> and it also had, it, uh, to me, it also had this sort of um, um, 50s vibe to it, too. Very yeah, sort yeah. of, you know, Miami, Palm Springs kind of feel. Oh, yeah. And don't you think that it's kind of um, a little bit spurred by the whole Florence Broadhurst revival? Um, you know, some of those iconic designers right. that you know, we're seeing. Um, and and it's kind of a I guess it's a natural segue between mid modern um, with all the Dorothy Draper inspired you know palm and and stuff like that. It's kind of an extension right. of that, but it's sort of sexy jungle, right? Yeah, absolutely. It was it was really cool. So here are some Global Views pillows that really spoke to it, and super textural um, and rough and, um, you know, very tactile, which, of course, I guess the jungle is, you know. I mean, uh -huh. it's really taking in it, not just pattern, but in texture, literally. These were really cool. Um, these, you know, big, giant grass cloth um, it was a print of grass cloth, kind of, um, uh -huh. but in a giant variety, which I thought was really interesting. And then these lily pads, um, have been around at Global Views for a long time, but in the green, they were really stunning. And every showroom was just overflowing with tropical um, foliage, Absolutely. wherever you went. Yep, yeah, it really was. This this was a great rug. What a showstopper, wasn't it? Uh -huh. And bamboo, sort of a loose bamboo, abstract bamboo motif, but just gorgeous colors and um, really vibrant. Global Views has been knocking it out of the parks for so long now with the color, but this one really was a stunner. Yep, this is really great. And, and this was one of my faves. Uh, I think both of us, right? Uh -huh. I mean, we, we were looking forward to market just for this introduction. So this is John Robeshaw for um, Dura Lee, and it's his first furniture collection, and then also um, his new edition of prints that he was putting on the furniture uh, silhouettes and frames. But what you're seeing on the left was, um, what would you say the wall was, 25 feet? Yeah. So it was... 10, 12 high. Yeah, 12 wow. high, 25 feet long, and it was hand painted white silk and it was the backdrop for his collection and again it was it was really stunning and they're hoping that they can save it and put it in one of their showrooms in hopefully either New York or LA because it it it, it had to be saved it was just really great oh it was beautiful and it was really hard to get a great picture of it because there's obviously a bunch of stuff in front of it but just really vibrant colors and playful and again with that you know, whole tropical theme instead of really Indian, although Indian, I guess, is considered um, tropical, but much more tropical than you usually see from him. 
and in everything down to the little plants and the tchotchkes that were around there. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was really, you'll see it in larger space too. Mm -hmm. This is a, a gal that I'm a big fan of, um, Justina Blakeney. Um, she has written a book called The New Bohemians, and some of you may be familiar with her, but um, she did a line that launched last market um, for Loloi, which, excuse me, I, I uh, misspelled Loloi last night on this slide at about 1 a.m. <laughs> um, and that she was supposed to launch um, her line for Selmet. And that was delayed now until, I believe, uh, spring. But she has this really great kind of super tactile, loose, bohemian vibe that mixes all kinds of stuff. And she calls her house the Jungalo. So she really loves that whole jungle vibe, tribal vibe. Uh -huh. And she's really, I think, becoming very influential in the marketplace. Absolutely. Some more looks that we saw. This is more of her stuff. So this is her wallpaper for hide and, and I should have put it on here, something in hide. But, hide and uh, burrows. It was huh? Hide and burrows. No, different one, different one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but this was shown at the Selmat um, showroom. It's really beautiful. This is one of her rugs for Loloi and one of her pillows for Loloi. They had this sort of tent set up that was really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And more typical stuff from her, again, with the tropical leaves, but really cool colorways. Um, and she has, if you follow her on Instagram, she has the greatest Instagram feed. This is a cactus off of her Instagram feed mm -hmm. that just really kind of speaks to that whole mood. But it's rough. It's casual. It's not, like, super sophisticated, you know? And it's kind and of... We, Kind of leaning into this sort of leafy kind of thing, um, botanical. On the right, this was a display at the Tebow showroom where they had taken these wonderful just glass vases and roots and all had put these pieces in water, and it was it was really it was really interesting, and it was a great it just was a great way to show you know to to fill the case and do a vignette. But yeah. I think it also speaks to that it's moving into this sort of like, you know, jungle fern, now woodland, you know, leaf. Right. This is one of their embroiders. This was an amazing embroider. The scale on Gorgeous. this is huge. And, and again, it sort of says tropical, but it also kind of says, you know, woodland. And, you know, it, 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 was, it was great. This whole, this whole theme was really wonderful. And, and, you know, so. indicative of what we saw at Tebow, too, sort of the sophistication, uh, the sophisticated side of Tebow really coming out this market. Uh -huh. I agree. I agree, um, which sort of brings us to this, when you're working in that in this sort of um, genre of tropicalia, jungle, or whatever, the greens really that were starting to pop, this what I call park bench green, shamrock green, being married to an Irishman, and I always got to throw that reference in there, but as you can see, this here's all this um, greenery, and then they did this wonderful chandelier and bright green, this wall with the blue, it just pops like crazy. Um, I w I'm really drawn to this color. This is sort of the, yeah. it was a fresh new color. Well, and it, I mean, it seems like there is no hue of green or blue that's off limits, and mixing them together. Um, you Absolutely. Know, in really interesting ways. Absolutely. So the hint of the future, I think, that we saw was at Tommy Mitchell. Um, he, this is, he is a metal artist. So on the left, what you're seeing is a wall sconce, and it's actually gold Brussels sprouts, like a Brussels sprout stock. And then he, these are under plexiglass, and these are metal pieces. They're um, actually dimensional. He also does them... Um, either under glass framed or you can he does them loose but I think fruits and vegetables we are going to start seeing that in the next I don't know six months or whatever well, we started I think to see we already are right you yeah. know and we've been saying, we've been saying that for a while but I think it's going to come on strong and yeah trend, especially with the tropical look for melons look for you know papayas all that tropical fruit and then into the like the more exotic 
um, vegetables. Right, and then and then, but you know that hopefully we'll see it in textiles. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot of it, but this is kind of giving you guys what we think is going to be the hint of the future. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And then, you know, speaking of these colorways and all of this lush um, tropical color and the tropical vibe, here we have um, Design Legacy and Kelly O'Neill and using those colors and interpret, interpreting them in a very contemporary and modern abstract way. Even the pillows, they have kind of that tropical vibe because of the coloring and the, and the style of it. So you, you're seeing it not necessarily um, literally, but also in a very contemporary and modern way. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> this was my favorite. This was the uh, showstopper, I thought, at market. Absolutely. Mitchell Black, um, they do wallpaper, they do um, wrapping papers, all kinds of print materials, but this red palm um, wallpaper was just absolutely killer. And then on top of it is this segmented um, beautiful peacock print. And again, you know, just that really sophisticated, lush, tropical vibe. We just, I'm, I can't get enough of it right now. Mm -hmm. it was, this was a showstopper. Mm -hmm. And then our good friend from, from <laughs> over the pond, Mariska Myers, um, who is um, from Amsterdam and has these very, very vivid tribal um, and tropical prints, but in very unexpected colorways. And so she has a lot of tropical influence, which you think in Amsterdam, I don't know where she got that. She must travel, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but she's got the parrots and the palm leaves and, and things like that. And I believe this is her first um, exhibit um, in the United States. So yeah. it was great. Here, I unfortunately missed seeing her, but um, this is more of her beautiful stuff. Look at that green and that fur. Oh my gosh, I just love it. Right. But really beautiful. And she's got stuff with fish and, and very interesting take on kind of the eye cat and uh, tropical vibe. Right, absolutely. And then this. And then we have Kate Spade, right, for mm -hmm. Kravit. Right, which is a little bit more traditional, yeah, fresher. Yeah. This, this is, I mean, it, you don't, it's interesting. The owl in the jungle. Now, that's one you don't really see every day. I'm <laughs> assuming probably owls do live in jungles, but, I mean, I thought that that was kind of a fun sort of kitschy thing. It's like, okay, everyone's doing jungle. We're going to do jungle, but we're, instead of a parrot, we're going to throw an owl in there, yeah. um, which has a sense of humor. I, I like that, you know. Right. Right, and her, and um, they extended her line at market um, at EJ Victor and at um, Jaipur Rugs, and from what we understand, it will be even um, a larger extension um, in October in fall market. She's really getting mm -hmm. into the home in a big way. Well, I think you can tell that they're just they're loving it, mm -hmm. and their showroom at EJ Victor was beautiful. They completely redid it this market. They're going to completely redo it again. And I think that's something that we're going to be able to look forward to from Kate Spade Home is that they're sort of reinventing the wheel every market, mm -hmm. which most companies don't do. Um, and so their um, creative director really, I think, their whole creative team is trying to be more, bring that sense of fashion, like where you have the spring runway and the, Octo and the fall runway. Uh -huh. And you show it, you know, it in different ways. I think that that is um, something that the whole industry can, you know, you know take a cue for. You see that yeah. in Global Views; they do a great job of that. Right. They're just more. Uh, they're just more um, adept in at taking risk and stuff. And so but there's nothing. There's nothing more boring though when you walk into a showroom. It's the same showroom that you saw last market. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Nothing so one of the things that sort of is extending out of this tropicalia and the whole contemporary abstract thing is this, these sort of wonderful dark and sexy and moody colorways, if you will, jewel tones if you're in the 80s or 90s. But we, ha we have to tell you that part of this was um, 
this whole topicalia was in the contemporary form was in wall art and every major manufacturer was showing wall art as a category and I guess what if there's a takeaway from today guys if you're no matter what you're selling whether you're full service or your window coverings or whatever it is if you're not in the wall art category um, it's gonna you're gonna be really lost it's gonna pass you by and you're gonna really lose an opportunity to make some money well, and especially because when you have companies like Design Legacy where you can purchase original art mm -hmm. that is collector quality art um, for very reasonable price for your clients, and I think that people are realizing that they want to make an investment in art. It's not just print. It's not, um, you know, sort of throwaway art that we've had, you know, for right. a very long time. People are really beginning to collect, and um, I think with FC. And One Kings Lane and these sites have educated a lot of people, and they are beginning their collection. So Design Legacy is such a great um, place to go and be able to offer that to your clients. And Deb and I have been fans of Kelly's for a while, but watching his style progress to me um, is really, really fascinating. It is. And I these totally dark, agree. moody ones too are like, oh, he's getting serious. He's like, <laughs> he's in his blue period. Um, but it's really fascinating to be able to see an artist growing and changing, and um, I think he's very talented, and obviously everybody else does as well. But and again, he will customize um, his pieces as to size, color, um, whatever you need. So mm -hmm. great resource there. You know, and again, here's just some examples. This was at Miles Talbot. So then they brought in an artist. So they were selling wall art along with the Joe Ruggiero collection and and uh, Dana Gibson, etc. So there was, and everyone Tebow was doing the same. I think every yeah. showroom we walked into, they were sell. Uh, Christian uh, Dorhan was doing it at Alden Parks. Everybody oh, they was had showing wall art. In there. They yeah, had an actual pop up gallery. Had a pop up gallery. Exactly. And yeah, beautiful art, and and it's so reasonable, and it's all originals, which is amazing to me. The price points. I mean, I don't think it's going to stay that way either. Do you, Deb? I mean, you better no. get it now. No. Those prices are going to go up. Absolutely. Um, one thing that we noticed coming back, um, in a lot of the bigger manufacturers was either whitewashing, lining, um, white stain on wood, and on mid-century modern inspired pieces as well. So um, it was kind of a, a really interesting take on what Deb, what, what were you calling it, Deb? Sort of that um, modernized. Well, it's sort of rustic modern, but it's, but, but um, it's kind of like there's two divergent paths. I, I saw this, this happening, but only with whites and this rustic. There wasn't, yeah. wasn't chippy paint kind of shabby chic no. kind of rustic modern. Because it was like I a think, wash, like yeah. a. But here in this picture, it was a little bit more uh, formal, wouldn't you say? It was also on pieces that weren't. It was they weren't chunky right. pine pieces, as you can see. Look right. at this table for Stanley. It ha it's well, got some I, line to go it. Ahead. No, it was. Well, what I love about this this collection, though, too, is that. They're using that finish as a unifier, and so if you have a client that you know you're trying to sort of you know move into the 21st, 22nd century, um, and they have pieces that they don't want to get rid of, this is a great way to sort of bring them more modern. Like, look at this very modern kind of uh, table in the center, and then more traditional pieces, but uh -huh. unifying them all with that finish is kind of a great way to mix and match for somebody who really isn't into a really eclectic vibe. Right. Lots of whites in everything. You know, here it is yeah. in the bedroom suite. Exactly. And again, you know, a very traditional um, table on one side, the traditional bench at the bottom, and then sort of a more rustic and modern look, but that whitewash um, finish really is a great unifier. Mm -hmm. unifier. Jonathan the Charles had a, look, a similar look. Right. Their kitchen. I mean, this is, go ahead. Kind of French. Kind of, mm -hmm. kind of, you know, it, it, it reads a lot of different ways. So I think it was a great, it's a great transitional yeah. um, look, as you said, and a unifier. I love the chair that I'll go back one. 
go back one. Look at the strap and it, how it crisscrosses in the back and goes around the side of the chair. Right. Connects. You know, that's a really unique thing that um, I'm loving in there. But it's, it's, I guess it's more of a rustic, you know, take yeah. on this Scandinavian look. And then Universal, I have to tell you that we took our tour through Universal. I haven't been in Universal in a while. They were so gracious, and the product there really is amazing. And, and Deb, you want to talk a little bit about their To the Trade program? So they, um, a lot of times people, a lot of designers think Universal is for stocking dealers, and yes, they do have um, a stocking dealer program, but they're doing um, a To the Trade program. There are no minimums, one piece. Um, you know, shipping is it's it, easy peasy kind of thing to do, and their price points. If you're guest rooms, right, second homes, um, you know, they have kids. certain people kids that work. work. You know, um, the kids. If you're doing kids rooms, I'm a huge believer in their kids stuff. It is not only is it is it great looking, it's really well made, but um, they have. They've got multitasking pieces, so like all their nightstands have um, little cubbies where they can put USB uh, chargers and they can charge their cell phones or their iPads or whatever on their nightstand. Their, their headboards, for example, have hidden task reading lights that you can pull around from the back at night if you want to read or whatever. So there's just really interesting little things with that and a really great price point. Um, yeah, so much functionality to it and oh. really some great thinking and innovation going on in there. Their dressers have little jewelry drawers, like walls that pull out from the back, um, so you can put your jewelry in it. I mean, just really interesting stuff. Um, but I, I'll tell you, I mean, it's great price point, quick ship, you know, you name it. And they are really rolling out the red carpet for designers. Mm -hmm. So definitely somebody to, to, to look at. And this is their new Elan collection, again, in that sort of whitewashed kind of tone. It was really um, interesting here. This is theirs also, I believe. Yes, and I mean, I, I love those um, cabinets in the back. You know, that's uh -huh. not something that you would, you know, it has a very contemporary vibe to it, but in that whitewash finish, you can mix it in with anything. And again, you know, very, um, some eclectic pieces. It's not what we would have typically thought of if you haven't looked at Universal in a while where they had matchy-matchy collections. Um, I think they're very well done. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And a lot of variety. Love this table. Uh -huh. um, and again, with that kind of rough whitewash uh, finish to it, but really a, a nice piece. And then and Bernhardt, this is a great chair, right, Deb? Right. This, I mean, and look at all the different mixed metals on it. So you've mm -hmm. got you've got your limed um, oak showing the great grain. These are stainless steel legs. You've got leather, you know, in the interior, and then the cushions are in this sort of tweedy menswear plaid kind of scenario. Um, it hit all the um, hit all the points. Mm -hmm. But I th I have a feeling that this finish is going to um, keep keep growing in popularity. Uh -huh. And I think you'll see colors coming out in it as well. That'll be interesting. So pillows. Well, just like wall art, everybody's got a pillow collection now. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's there, a, we've never seen more pillows on the face of the earth. I don't know what's happening, and I feel sorry for all of the ducks and geese out there because there is a run on down. <laughs> right? There's a definitely a run on so down. So this, this happens to be, accent. yeah, this happens to be um, Eastern Accents, and we'll talk a little bit more about it, but um, the bolster, the neck roll, I should say, in this, with the S on it, is part of their new monogram program. Price point is really great, and they have some of the most beautiful fonts. Mm -hmm. I'll show you later. And then oh, these, and then our okay. friend Deborah Mean hit, uh, hit high point with a vengeance with her pillows. Uh, they were everywhere. She makes one-of-a-kind vintage pillows. And excuse my gratuitous photo, but that's the only photo I took <laughs> of the pillows because I was color coordinated to them that day. Um, but, uh, yeah, she was everywhere. This was at Universal in a room that Kelly Ellis did. Uh -huh. Here they are again on this great mm -hmm. sofa. This is also a Universal piece, Chesterfield. 
Yeah, this was Kelly Ellis's uh, uh, room that she put together. But that look at that beautiful scarf that she made that pillow out of. She really does have some gorgeous, gorgeous stuff. Right. If you're looking for one of a kind, unique stuff, look her up. And there and were a This is Magnolia Home. Yeah. You're a fan of hers, aren't you, Deb? Well, kind of. It's interesting to see um, where she's kind of watched her journey, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. So if you know her, she and Chip are from Fixer Upper, and they were there, and they were certainly part of a lot of celebrity launches and licensing launches that happened during market. Um, I always see a lot of that at market, but there seemed to be a lot more this market. I guess that that is... Um, showing us that, that High Point is coming back, if you will. This is part of her collection. The rugs are from um, Lolai. The pillows are also from Lolai. Again, lots of texture, interesting colors, um, some folk art pieces um, were her inspiration. This sort of popcorn stitch here, is, this was a great pillow. I um, actually saw something very similar to this in Pottery Barn's catalog, so she's certainly, you know, they're kind of in tune. And she introduced 250 pieces of furniture. So she had a... And the rug, she had probably that many rugs. Yeah. I mean, I, I've never seen such a huge introduction at one time. Um, I yep. mean, they literally took over half the Lola showroom, or not half of it, but right. a, a big chunk. She she decided to if she was going to launch she was going to go in a big way and she did and, well, she and did. <laughs> yeah she did she did you know I have to say though that the pillows um, a lot of times when you see very sort of big bulky texture pillows maybe they're not put together so well they were really really well made uh -huh. um, tightly woven you know sometimes we see these devs deb and they're kind of loose and they don't hold up but they really were well done. Mm -hmm. um, and very interesting textures. And details, you know, a lot of, mm -hmm. you know, pom-pom at the corner, yarn fringe, multicolored fringing, you know. Saddle really stitching, all kinds of stuff, yeah. Um, one thing we, we continue to see um, is, you know, the use of banding, still our number one go-to for trim right now, even though we're starting to see a resurgence of other trims. Um, but this Eastern Accents pillow on the right was interesting because it was cut leather. It wasn't pieced and joined. It was uh, probably laser cut, and then they um, embroidered it, or not embroidered, applicated it onto the thing. But So you see where the Grogain ribbon is pieced, mm -hmm. um, the leather is not. So that was an interesting um, application, I thought, and something that if you um, use a laser, laser printer service, you know, that's something that I think we could get into and make really interesting instead of trying to use just linear goods. Right. And then notice these are shams at the back and we saw this not only in decorative oh, pillows yeah. but in bedding shams. This smaller box with micro cord boxing or with a that baseball is a seaming. Of the moment, isn't it? Pardon? I said that's the pillow of the moment, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it is. This was the pillow moment with this it's inch and a half box, maybe mm -hmm. in some cases even an inch. Sometimes we saw tiny flanges instead of cording mm -hmm. and boxed, which was really interesting. Yeah. Almost sort of that, that French cushion look, but without the um, tufting to a French right. cushion. And I, I love the look. Here it is again at Bernhardt. Right. Um, but I think it's like baby stepping us back into trim, right? So now you've got some cording. And you've got, um, you know, tape on the front. Uh, and so this is I, I really liked it. This and is it an adds in sort of loop fringe on this damask pillow that was interesting. Mm -hmm. That was a beautiful one. And here, look so at the good. tiny flange where you've got yeah. sometimes there was a, a pleat in the corner or it was just open, so it was four pieces. And tape also. Right. Decorative. Tape so on pattern. Which is, yes. some, again, starting to do that. Pa right. Layers of different types of pattern. Here, this is mm -hmm. Selamet, again. And this, this was a trend that we saw. And unfortunately, you know, with doing the tour now, Deb and I um, realized we need to take way more pictures because um, we're missing some stuff. But this was beautiful gold embossing on this pillow. And I mm -hmm. saw a lot of metallics. Um, and this company, Deb, I don't know if you remember their name, but they're in Salon and they print on linen. Um, but beautiful, beautiful hand-blocked um, prints 
on raw linen with all these metallic paints, and they were absolutely gorgeous. And they also did wall art. Uh -huh. But metallic uh, printing, metallic embellishing um, on pillows was big. Uh -huh. Absolutely. And it's then kind this of a is a subtle sheen instead of the sparkle that we've been seeing. This is Lancaster Custom Works, and they just introduced a really long line. They do a lot of private labeling, slip covering. You know, they'll do a Muslim frame and, and slip cover it. This is a source that, as a designer, we should all know. They started um, doing a pillow line this market. I thought these were really interesting. This is a nod to what we're starting to see happening in quilting and upholstery, which we'll talk about in a minute. But it was sort of like these envelope um, pillows with a tie. Also, this is a slip cover for a Parsons chair with this banding on it. Really wonderful detail. Clean and simple, not the buttons and all the frou-frou that you kind of think of when you see a slip cover on a Parsons, but it, it really was it was really um, a nice line. And just really nice detailing, right? Uh -huh. The knots and everything. Right. They did a really nice job. Mm -hmm. So on the left here are just, a, just an example of some of the fonts that you can get to monogram on any of the pillows that Eastern Accents sells. Um, I think there are like, what, 15 different fonts. And they're yeah. not, as you can see, they're not your usual diamond script, you know, single block. So I, this you know, is definitely and, and a program to look at. You can get them up with any of their fabrics, right, Deb? Yep, any of their fabrics. So whether you want solid, whether you want to print, you know, we always talk to you guys about um, customizability and, and uh, personalization for your clients. So now this is a great source. And we're going to see way more embroidery coming um, from Eastern Accents because they invested in a huge embroidering um, and quilting machines, machinery, didn't they, Deb? Yes. This is on the top on the on the right is also Eastern Accent. So again, here you've got this embroidered piece. Now I've got Rick Rack, I've got tape, I've got a band, and now I have this pleated rosette. There's a lot going on. I mean a lot of detail on that pillow. And if I could blow it up, I could tell you the price, but it was not bad. And then on the lower uh, right, this is from um, my friend Paula Queen. Um, Jackie and I know her well. She's in actually in Chicago, and her studio's in Lincoln Park. And she does some of the most gorgeous um, beaded pillows and decorative pillows. And she's now in doing trims and run table runners and table toppers. And then at this market, she was taking some of her trims, and she had turned them into jewelry. Um, they were just really gorgeous, like cuffs and arm upper armbands and things. So again, this is all um, this is all almost like a nail head, but like a chain mm -hmm. nail in this rose gold. And then here, this is all um, embroidered beaded work that she pieced this pillow together. It, they're really gorgeous. Really beautiful. Mm -hmm. Statement pillows. It's all about the statement pillow, right, Deb? Absolutely. Right Have a statement pillow. So <laughs> Speaking of a statement, a statement um, on the right, um, pillows extending into upholstered headboards and bedding. On the right is Legacy um, Home, and um, a really this is one, a new shape for them in an upholstered headboard. But again, with this really graphic black and white print, it was really wonderful. It really it was again a statement piece that you saw when you walked by their showroom. But my fave was, um, this was at Design Legacy, and um, Kelly O'Neill has the ability to digitally print anything for you, but he has a huge library. So here he's taken this sort of Renaissance still life and um, put it on linen, and then they've, act this was a four-poster bed. This was the back of the four-poster, so it was this padded headboard. Again, mixed with the animal print, and then they did the small, you know, Virgin Mary in the front <laughs> for your bed, <back>, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> With a leopard. Yeah. That's sort of the, the uh, what would you call that? Um, uh, not a conflict. Yeah, but a di definitely a dichotomy. <laughs> but um, it, I just, I love the concept. It's like really gorgeous. And, you know, how many of us have run into trying to come up with something new and different for our Oh, family? yeah. I thought this was a great way. Mm-hmm. So we're going to show you some upholstery trends now, just briefly. Um, lots of dressmaker trims, um, 
looks, sort of the sort of English drawing room coming back. Um, we also saw a lot of contrast backs using pattern and blocking in chairs and uh, accent pieces, lots of statement pieces. Tribals and geometrics, I think, are waning in, in favor of that. Tropicalia, um, fresh florals, and certainly greens. The palettes are warmer. Um, reds and orangey reds, not blue reds, yeah. um, were in almost every showroom there was a pop of, of some sort of red. Lots of smaller scaled furniture and silhouettes to accommodate that whole sort of like tiny living and tiny nation and urban, you know, living. And then we're going to show you where upholstery is going in quilting from channels to tuck and roll to diamonds to biscuit tufting. Um, it, we, that whole true deep tufted look is waning a bit. Yeah, it's all about a lower profile, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So here again is um, John Robichaud for Dura Lee. This is his day bed sofa, and literally, it's like a down, this is a 100% down cushion, and you've got to maintain it. They talked about it in the showroom. If you're going to sell it to your client, you're going to have to show her how to shake it out, but it's really deep. It's literally a twin-size bed. Yeah, and room. they can put a regular, um, mat. you could put a twin mattress on there. Sure. Like said. Yeah, you could actually mm -hmm. do that, right? Don't it's, want, yeah. It, Notice the interesting silhouette again, this sort of Indian jungle, British colonial kind of feel to it that, that John has anyway. And then here's a better shot of that hundred uh, hand painted white silk. Here's a yeah, that mural was it. just it was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. And then again, um so here's this is John Robichaud. This is his um, ottoman. This is a, and two new fabrics. This is um, his version of a Chesterfield, but in a pattern piece. And then the scalloping, which is also a nod to what's happening in silhouettes, which are becoming a little bit more yeah. graceful, more feminine in look, if you will. And his line, his line definitely fell into the category of. of smaller pieces. Mm -hmm. um, he had one of his signature pieces was a um, a little vanity chair and it was about as small as you could get it right. and still functional but great for tiny spot spaces and a smaller very low pro low scale in mm -hmm. height. Right and um, you know we've seen all these little what they are calling cocktail tables they're like 12 inches round or 14 inches round. Mm -hmm. That's what we've seen at previous markets. Now that's shrunk down to where we've got like 8 inch diameter on, you know, on a pedestal. You could literally put a bread and butter plate on it and that's about it or one glass. Right. But there were all these little kind of, so the whole idea is like all these little pieces and then you can also, you know, collage them together into larger pieces. We talked about that when we saw that happening a market or two ago with Ottomans. It's now moved into all these sort of stacking and reverse stacking and clustering of um, accent tables and if such. On the from a upholstery standpoint, so again, John Robichaud, this was his bed at Durley on the right, and then this is um, my, Miles Talbot and um, Joe Ruggiero. And, you know, we saw a lot of monochromatic graphic bedding ensembles and uh, room designs in general. And so whether it was blue and white, black and white, um, mm -hmm. A lot of that going on. A lot of that. Um, More of a, a, but it's a softer graphic silhouette. So like here with, with TiVo, um, you know, we usually go into TiVo and there's always a great dose of color, um, but this time they really decided to show the more sophisticated side of what uh, they have to offer, which is, um, you know, half of of their product. And so they went very monochromatic and uh, have this beautiful display of paper flowers, um, wallpaper flowers. But mm -hmm. there's that same pattern that we showed you before in the more tropical colorway. Now in the blues and it becomes a little more graphic. Um, it's a very large scale so the, their scale is getting bigger and bigger mm -hmm. of their prints. There's that setup. Again, it's it's not typically what you see in the Tebow showroom. It's usually this explosion of 
contrasting colors. So that it was really nice, a nice departure, mm -hmm. um, with more of a monochromatic, but still a lot of graphics, mixing graphics, um, and pattern. Love this little chair. This is actually mm -hmm. done in a sombrella fabric. This was one of my. This is my new fave sombrella fabric because it feels like a chenille. It's really, it's really neat. But then the little tiny buttons. This just reminds me of fifties. Palm Beach porch kind of Lily Pulitzer well, kind you, of feel. Wouldn't you expect that chair to be done in like a yellow vinyl, you know, with yeah. a turquoise piping and button, <laughs> but you know, it's been given sort of a sophisticated um, feel, but still with that high performance fabric. And Tebow is leading the way there with both Krypton and uh, Sunbrella. Uh -huh. um, this, this room was absolutely gorgeous and they showed, um, this is their new signature fabric, this market, which is this big sort of not really a trellis I, it's a, a you know diamond sort of graphic Threat kind of thing what we yeah. loved about it was that it is a flat print and then they have um, done an applique stitch over it so it's not a it didn't appear to be a true applique uh -huh. um, but it looked like it because the, of the stitching and so it gave it a really nice dimension that a flat you know trellis that we've had all those flat trellises now forever um, it was a nice uh, way to do it, I thought. And then here's that, we first you saw it in the green, then you saw it just on the last slide before in the blue, and here it is in the tone on tone. It takes on a mm -hmm. whole different feel in that sort of leaf pattern. Yeah, and more painterly um, looks mm -hmm. from Tebow rather than, you know, their usual like sort of tight blocking graphics. This wallpaper was stunning, it was a typical um, and yet tropical with the pineapples damask, but printed on a snakeskin texture. It was absolutely gorgeous. It was gorgeous. It, it was colors. really beautiful. This is out of their yeah. new, one of their new books. And again, um, love this engineered print on this on this chair. Oh, yeah. With the Greek. Gonna key. see more and more of that. Yeah, absolutely loved it. I loved what they did with the tablecloth, taking this really large scale mm -hmm. block plaid and then they pieced it at the top and then of course look at this bowl full of white roses again the florals and table, were table beautiful. skirts are coming back in a big way mm -hmm. and we're seeing them everywhere especially in show houses right now it's everything skirted so terrific so this tufting is, go ahead yeah go ahead. this is me go ahead oh. talking over you <laughs> this is Nathan Anthony and as Deb said um, you know, some really innovative things happening right now in quilting, tufting, um, and it really, I do think, uh, as Deb said, you know, you're coming from like tuck and roll upholstery or whatever, but notice these color blocked uh, pieces that goes all the way around the back of the sofa, uh -huh. really interesting channel quilting um, on those little, odd, not really ottomans, but are what yeah, kind of an accent piece, kind of an itty like a, bitty out of it. Yeah, yeah. really, but but again, uh, really, this this was a statement sectional that you can't oh, put this up against the wall, which was another interesting thing. A lot of a lot of back, you're going to see a lot of things done on the backs of furniture, yeah. and so they they're meant to float in the room. That was one thing about Universal too. They finish all of the backs or a lot of the backs of all their furniture, and Alden Parks as well. Mm -hmm. um, are realizing that nothing's going against the wall right now. I love this is my one of my faves. Look at this chair. What a showstopper this was. Um, so it it appears to be um, pieces that are pieced together, but it was actually just trim that they sewed on the top of it. Uh -huh. um, so it was a little scallop trim and um, stuck out. But what a great little piece. Um, yep. And a great thing to do on pillows or bedding or whatever. You know, window treatments. And um, an easy embellishment, right? Yep. And then look in the back. Look at this headboard. Here's that sort of mm -hmm. fragmented, um, color blocked, but all in one color on that headboard. Yeah. And this is still Nathan Anthony. They yep. they did some amazing. Yeah. They stuff. were re really did. And then here, oh, yeah. look at the. Here's this sort of like interesting. It's sort of channel print, mm -hmm. and then it's like got the angles. Lots of angled things in furniture, case goods. Angles were big. Um, I didn't see in some of the new shapes and silhouettes, for example, in mm -hmm. case goods, nothing was rectangular or square. It was no. all trapezoidal or, or mm -hmm. had a stacked feel to it. Yes. 
And Here this is again, Nathan Anthony. There's the top of those two um, little benches. Just very, very, you know, thinking out of the box. And again, mm -hmm. that that um, diagonal tufting on that chair is really pretty. I mean, it just makes such a great statement. These are so, fab. You know, you've seen, we've seen there, been there, done that with the whole, you know, diamonds and the button tufting and whatever. But so to make it, make a real statement, then you just have to elongate the silhouette so that it's like crazy high. <laughs> And <laughs> the scale is all out. I feel like this belongs in the Kardashians' house or something. Yeah, and look at how low <laughs> and look at how low it sits. I mean, so it was uh -huh. like it was low seat, seating and extremely high back. But then, are you these know, were those Bruce's chairs? Who's yeah, those Bruce? are Bruce. Um, then yeah. this is um, this is um, who is this? I can't remember. I have to can't remember. But again, di on the side, diamond. Um, Quilting, Quilt. stainless steel leg, very contemporary. Notice the baseball stitching no, um, mm -hmm. on the uh, cushions. And the leg is something we saw over and over, right? Uh, Those sort of industrial legs with the exposed bolt. Um, that was everywhere. Mm -hmm. This is caracol. Again, interesting. All, this, all their seams were piped. So it was tight backed, tight, you know, feet, and uh, not even a skirt. You know, it was a sort of yeah. like all in one piece. It was really interesting. But again, that it says car upholstery, bracket, right? Right. And that bracket, the same industrial bracket on there. Yep. Yep. Caracol uh, has really uh, stepped it up. We love their showroom. Yep, we did. So talk about 360 degree viewable furniture. Every piece there is meant to be seen from every right. angle. This is um, Ambella Home, again, diamond quilting in a red. But no, by the way, notice the slope and the curve on this arm. Really interesting, almost a sweeping staircase, if you will. And then in the back, this piece here, this is what I'm talking about as far as case goods. Normally, you'd see this as a chest of drawers, and it'd be rectangular. But it comes up, and it curves in with this sort of gentle feminine curve. And then it's smaller at the top than it's on the bottom. Saw that really coming um, to fruition in several showrooms. Um, this is from Mod Shop. And, and um, they are an interesting company. Um, Beautiful, modern furniture, but they sell their hardware. And you know how hard it is to find large-scale hardware? Well, this stuff is big, bulky, and beautiful. It, a lot of it incorporates acrylic with it. Mm -hmm. um, notice that I kind of cut it off, but there's one that's a gun at the bottom. <laughs> I, mean, I was just going to uh, say, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the you know, you never know when somebody <laughs> wants gun hardware on their case goods. I'm sorry. It's gonna, you know, it's going to come up some point. But... Just so, um, the furniture alone is gorgeous, but this hardware, and it also comes um, in a um, uh, stainless steel, too. It's absolutely beautiful and um, very reasonably priced for the size and um, the craftsmanship that goes into it. So I would look them up up there online, modshop1.com, I believe. But it speaks to this whole, everything was in some shape or form, you know, Brass, gold, gold leaf, rosy gold, coppery gold. It was all, you know, the glitters is gold. Um, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I forgot our. I, this was our new category. Yeah. <laughs> no problem. I got excited about the product. Um, this actually is the one of the trend um, vignettes that they put up. This was at Market Square. Again, um, you can see this is wonderful. This is wallpaper, and then they started um, – cutting it off and fragmenting it into pieces and did this wall art piece, these sort of rose gold copper pendant lamps, you know, gold in soft goods, gold in hard goods, gold in a finish, gold on the wall, gold in your legs of your furniture, gold was everywhere. Accessories, this is what, Emporium Home at the top yeah, right? Yeah, Emporium Home. Ashley Childress just knocks it out of the park every market, and um, she obviously loves gold because everything is gold in there. But some really um, unique thinking goes into her product. Um, unfortunately, she's being ripped off right and left, um, but she's got some really, really interesting things. Yep, she really does. Very eclectic, um, but a lot of gold. So this is my favorite guy at market. He's his first time showing. Um, these are met metallic floral or 
florals in pots. He also did them in painted metal, but he did and he did a sort of this white and gold version against black, which was stunning. These pieces were, and when did they run? A couple hundred dollars, I think, weren't they? Well, yeah, and they're they're really truly art pieces. Oh they're my gosh, beautiful yeah. sculptures. The the craftsmanship and the attention to detail is absolutely stunning. And um, they come in a huge variety of sizes. He does tables. He does lights. He does a, mm -hmm. a well worth a visit to his website because he is coming on strong as a, you know really an emerging um, guy. And he's been around for a while. But these are his tables, just filled with these beautiful feathers and butterflies and um, flowers under acrylic. Everything's or not everything, but a lot of it is mounted in acrylic. But mm -hmm. I mean, what a beautiful art piece. And again, I think, don't you think, Deb, that this speaks to people want, they're, they're going for these smaller pieces that are collection pieces that they're mm -hmm. going to keep for a lifetime. Right, exactly. Um, they're art. Yeah, well. And their interior lighting is art. Um, you know, this came out a few markets ago, the, um, the coral lamp, but here it is in white in the brass. Just so stunning. And... Mm. You know, talking about the importance of metals in arteriors, their um, showroom in High Point is split into two different sections and two different um, showrooms, really, across the hall from each other. And this market, they literally grouped everything that was gold in one and everything that was silver in another. So you walked into the main showroom, and it was literally everything in there was, was either brass or gold or some sort of um, golden finish. So it was really kind of striking, and, and some of our people that were with us on the tour were like, well, do they only do gold? And like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it was really, really an interesting way to do that. Um, yeah, it, it really was. was. Yeah. It was cool. And then this, the, I mean, these pieces, uh, Aviva Stanoff, who we've talked mm -hmm. to you about before um, in the soft goods arena, decorative pillows and textiles, is now in the lighting game. Mm -hmm. And she's an amazing designer. And um, just talking about Curry and Company, too, we had the pleasure of going to their new, um, hugely, I guess, what would you call it, expanded showroom um, in the Green Building in High Point, and it was amazing. They have done such a beautiful job. Um, Deb and I just admired their company so much because they really love designers, and they go the extra mile. I mean, they have made just the most beautiful showroom there, mm -hmm. and they had a pop-up Potterton bookstore in there that Deb and I <laughs> could have spent the whole market in. I was I was illegally photographing books while people were, were We were uh, pushing people out of the way so that she could take pictures oh my and she'd, God. Hold, she'd hold court and it was a, like oh, we needed a big blanket to hold to hide us but oh my god, that, it was amazing. That was my my shield she was like shielding the guy and, and I was illegally photographing all of his beautiful things. I'm sorry, Potterton. Mm -hmm. But and, and but they are embracing that, and they're actually um, and I, I'm going to get the facts wrong, but they're somehow helping to build a library, a permanent library, right? Deb? Correct. So um, her yes. company is, which is an amazing thing um, with Potterton. Right. It, absolutely, it was really. Mm -hmm. and so here's here's an example of. Oh, go back one now. Go back one. This was Aviva, wasn't For it? For the other Aviva Stana. Look at the beautiful. Um, way that those are put together. It's like jewelry. I mean, it really is an art piece, again, talking about, you know, art. But, the, I mean, it's like a jewelry fitting on there. Yeah. Really, really gorgeously done. Yeah. Here's an example of how the scale of their um, of their showroom. What did he say? 30,000 yeah. square feet? It's, ma it's massive. It's, it's just massive. a lighting wonderland. It's like you've fallen down the rabbit hole into, you know, Alice right. in Wonderland. This is our tour group. Um, on the right is the, the salon room for arteriors, and then on the left here, this is more prior, um, this is gilded leather florals that are layered, and then um, um, riveted, or they actually use a center nail head, so almost like a p pinned almost, but uh, to the fabric and for the pillows, and then again, these nail head trims. This was... Um, 
Oh, this chain mail was just gorgeous. I think this was also arteriors. We just it just hung and it moved when you walk by and it just had it was a really sexy piece of light. Well, and the one single light, you know, yeah, kind it of, was really great. It's, 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 art, it's lighting as art more than anything else. But this whole gold glitters was everywhere on everything. On the on the right, you've got um, scratch and raffia from Anne Gish. So we're seeing the metallics again bedding in soft goods. How about this woven piece? This was um, on the chair. This was actually vinyl wallpaper that they had upholstered this chair with and done the bolster with. And then this folded ribbon. These were all vinyl papers. This was from um, York wall covering that piece that they did. It's great. Yeah. And again, this is the vendor that I can't remember that was in salon. I apologize, but the one that did the metallic um, pillows also does wall art, and this was some of their printed on a hand block printed on uh, paper. And then gold in, in uh, wall art, our friend Kelly Ellis had her um, new collection for Left Bank Art debut at High Point Market, and she does a series of sign language um, hands that are um, gold gilt and um, pen and ink, really pretty. Mm -hmm. Very, very fun. Very nice. So um, next aspect is really furniture as modern art. In case goods, in upholstery, in accent pieces, this is Kelly Wurzler at EJ Victor, and really they're like, that these pieces, as you said, as we said before in other categories, the whole idea here is instead of buying a piece of sculpture or um, you know an old master print or whatever, uh, invest and collect in furniture because these are one of a kind kind of pieces. It's really started with the whole reissuing of iconic pieces by not only contract furniture houses, but some of the old um, guard, whether it be Baker and Noel and, you know, the Ames chair, the Barcelona chair. And now it's really moved into new pieces, going to, um, you know, designers that have a really great um, artistic eye and, you know, three-dimensional eye and turning them into, um, you know, pieces in, uh, for art. This on the um, both of these pieces are actually also from uh, E.J. Victor, and they're Michael Bierman, and this he's a California designer. So this was sort That's, of this, uh, that Michael Bierman is uh, Theodore Alexander. I mean, Theodore Alexander, excuse me. But again, sort of you know, again on the front of this cabinet, it's brutalist. It's all inlaid metal. It also has a sculptural quality to it. It also can kind of you know references the abstract art that we're seeing on the wall. And then you look at this light fixture. I mean it. And then and look at the detail in the um, front and the dimension on this console. He was doing he was doing some really interesting things. I'm going to show you a couple other pieces later on. Um, this is Bernhardt. Um, Bernhardt's all about sort of um, from an art perspective. It's about more being metalsmiths, and um, every piece seemed to have some sort of face on it, whether it was German silver or stainless steel or something. They they were all about um, really you know, doing, working with metal as a metal artist, uh, artisan. I mean, and, and you'll see some pieces coming up that were really great. On the top left, that's Equinox. That's a console by Marge Carson, as is this piece um, covered in alligator. One. And look at all the inlaid pieces. I mean, really, that. It's stunning. I love it. It's, it's look at boring. the hardware, too. Again, you know, we talking about hardware as jewelry and, and uh, the big scale of hardware, but I mean, I just love that piece. Uh -huh. love that it looks like four separate pieces stuck together. And then Ambella Home, I mean, look at, he, not from the furniture to the mirror to the accessories to the wall art, it all sort of, you know, in this vignette is about making a purchase that is, is makes a statement as art, if you will. Exactly, uh, and it's so individual, you know, so it doesn't fit into any category. Each piece is it's, has stands on its own individual merit, and then you blend it together. Um, so, I mean, look at that table. Mm -hmm. 
console table is amazing. And, and coming out of that is going to be, I think, all these sort of collaborations and collectives, if you will. That seemed to be the whole little mm -hmm. hot new word. So this is HC28. Um, they are a Chinese firm that do a work with 15 global designers, very, very high-end designers, very prolific and creative, um, Christian Delacour, Francois Champard, um, you name it, the, um, they, they've created this, what they call Designers Collective, and they're doing pieces, and they're being reproduced in uh, for the luxury market globally. This was their first introduction um, in the U.S. They were in E.J. Victor's uh, room. So again, look at this, this table piece. It's called Miss Five. It's like the five pieces put together. Or this little table, actually, um, the lacquering on some of these pieces, because um, was truly amazing. They were true it, it, artists and pieces. Yeah, and I mean this collection you really have to see in person. The craftsmanship on these oh. pieces, unbelievable. Um, and some of their engineering and some of the case goods. And you know sometimes it's much harder to do something really well that's simple. And um, they really knocked it out of the park. Um, really just did. absolutely beautiful and beautiful colors in their lacquer. With that said, again, upholstered case goods still, um, you know, coming to market. Here you have um, hair on hide in a dresser. Here you have actual padded fat damask fabric on the fronts of of this nightstand. They also did this in a console and a dining room. Again, here's that whitewash from Bernhardt. The, again, the whitewash that Jackie was talking about. On the right is Michael Bierman, the chagrin, and the sort of art modern kind of feel to it. It has a little bit of art for you know piece to it, upholstered in in chagrin. It was just it was gorgeous. Here's Michael Bierman talking to our tour group. These um, bookcases were pale blue suede, and they were upholstered in suede. They were just stunning stunning and then this is a, a chagrin piece that he did and what I loved about it is by the way this where this metal piece is that's the drawer and it literally the drawer shape front comes out like that it's really it was and then this tray top to it his attention to detail was really wonderful too and you know I think that you know vendors like this like Theodore Alexander EJ Victor Bernhardt so many of them Caracol embracing these really um, sort of you know groundbreaking and not avant-garde but certainly not in the mainstream um, uh -huh. designers like a Kelly Worsler or like a M Michael Behrman and Jamie Drake that are pushing the boundaries of design and furniture and bringing them into these mainstay uh, mainstream manufacturers is an opportunity then for everybody to own some of this stuff. So I, I think we're seeing more and more of it. It's getting really, really interesting out there. Right. It really is. And then last... Normally you would see that in a really high-end, you know, small boutique showroom in New York or Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. and, and then last, this sort of graceful, feminine silhouette. Do not love this sofa with this mm -hmm. sort of like comes out and then they have the little bolster pillows in here. I mean, it again. And the detail curve. on the back, the little curves on the back. I know. The it's spherical. Who is this? This is uh, Bernhardt. Oh, Bernhardt. But uh, from the back, it's, uh, the silhouette it's, is gorgeous. It's really wonderful. And then the lumbars mm -hmm. instead of your typical squares. This right. is caracol. And again, notice this. The, these tub chairs are meant to be seen. It's all that glitters mm -hmm. is gold, but it has this sort of feminine, you know, slender leg on this cabinet, this dark cabinet with these tiny, slender, kind of graceful, not really Queen Anne, but but tapered mm -hmm. um, leg to it, if you will. Little details like the buttons. I love these. These were storage poofs with the little, and they were done in leather with these buttons and this um, gusset on each corner. Or the stretcher bar, look at the curve on the stretcher bar here again. The scallop again. Yep. Mm -hmm. At the bottom. And it's kind of morphing into this, you know, these organic bases. Things are kind of twisted and wavy. I mean, look at this console, these legs on this console. 
it's like the Salvador Dalying of, of furnishings right, right. now. I mean, because it says art piece, right? It does, and it's about it being an art piece. Yeah. It really is. It's really wonderful. Or this twisted, um, this is from HC28, this table. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have a tub chair at market and you were a manufacturer, you weren't one of the cool kids. Very true. <laughs> so <laughs> this is, this is um, actually Michael Beerman's. This is his new um, take on a tub. And it has... And, it had it, and most, for the most part, it was a swivel and, or a swivel rocker. Right. Swivel, uh, swivel rocker. Or in, in this case with Michael Beerman, this was a memory swivel. So it goes back to where it always was so that you don't always have to keep fussing with it. But again, look at what's happening around the backside of these tub chairs and then in all kinds of shapes and forms. You've got cutouts, you've got you know metal strapping and, and more menswear look. You've got the, this take on a tub. It kind of says club chair, but it also says sort of um, tub to it. Again, notice the legs with the rivets. In, and then this was um, the tub chair on a swivel from That was the Bernhardt. showstopper. This was, this, market. Yeah. this was, this is Wengi wood mm -hmm. that's been carved and then German silver that's been hammered over the carving to create the back on that swivel tub. So, or this look more contemporary. This was in one of the windows. This kind of crocodile, faux cro croc, um, chair with more metal, the mixed metals. And last but not least, talking about designer launches, my design partner, Jackie, launched her rug collection for Fezzi. And why don't you tell us a little bit about it, Jack? OK, shameless, shameless promotion here. Um, but I'm part of the Hope Trends collection for Fezzi rugs. And uh, it's a group of four designers, which is uh, myself, Julia Buckingham, Carrie Kelly, and Michelle Boyd. And we are putting together a collection for Fazy. So we had sort of the interim launch at High Point Market. And these were the first strike-offs that came in, coming straight from the factory in India. So we hadn't even seen them. And that was so it was really fun. They're really highlighting the design process and what goes into it. Um, there's a picture of me with some of my designs that I submitted for, uh, for the collection. So we're going to launch the final rugs in July in Las Vegas Market. And um, we are really excited about market. I'm thrilled to be a part of this thing. I want to thank everybody that came out and saw us um, for our little party at High Point. And we're going to be having another one in Las Vegas. Yay. And it just so happens, right, next slide, Yeah. that we are doing our VIP tour in Las Vegas. This will be our second um, tour in Las Vegas. We are super excited about it. We are ramping it up. It is going to be really spectacular. It's a little bit different than our tour in High Point Market. It is invitation only. It is um, for designers that either have never been to market or haven't been in the last couple markets. And it, unfortunately, is only available to designers and buyers who are west of the Mississippi. Um, so if you're east of the Mississippi, you can still take uh, advantage of our high point tours. But this was west of the Mississippi. And we're really looking for key designers who um, are very well established and for whatever reason have never come to Vegas market. And um, so if you're interested in attending and um, qualify, please email us. It is a VIP um, turnkey experience and um, it's going to be really a fantastic time. We're really excited. So thanks you all thanks all for um, joining us on our first look at High Point Market and have a great weekend. Talk to you soon Jackie. Bye guys thanks for coming and uh, hope you are enjoying all of the trends out there. Let us know um, if you see something that's trending that we're not covering, because we'd like to know what's going on in your neighborhood too. So thanks a lot. Have oh, a great wait a weekend. minute. I got uh, you know what? I got oh. a couple of questions. Woo woo woo. Sorry oh, guys. Sorry. You thought I was going. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, okay, let's see. What do we have? What's the name of the company? It's Lancaster Custom Works, Catherine. So Custom Works is um, one word. 
Um, Paula's last name is Paula Queen, and the name of her company is PR, and it's spelled P Y A R and company. Um, am I familiar with Thurston Reed? Um, yes, actually, we didn't. Uh, Michael, we didn't put a slide in. We saw Thurston Reed at Caderas on Saturday. He's um, they were repping. Um, I think they were new to his collective, weren't they? She's uh, the I'm, gal I'm that had sure. the elephant metallics on velvet. Right, and they're they're a boutique um, pillow, and now expanding into more soft goods, and they print on velvet. And I believe they're a British company, right? Yeah. Or they yeah. located in the U.S. But um, really, they're very popular right now. They've got a lot of press, beautiful product, and they are repped by Codaris. Here, I'll give you a sneak peek. Hold on, I think I have. If you, if I can find it, um, you guys are seeing my screen. But here is a look at what she was showing at market. And they started out really with those, um, like the elephants and stuff like that. But now they're kind of expanding. And um, if it goes the direction of most companies that are rep by Kodaris, um two markets, they'll have a full furniture line and everything else. Right. Because they do, we love Cody and we love Kodaris. They do a great job um, right. um, hand-picking all of their vendors. And so Krista um, said, did either of you see rug ottomans? I have a customer asking for them and haven't yes. seen them. You mean, so you mean like the poofs that are covered in kelums, Krista? Yeah. Design Legacy has a ton of them, yeah. um, as well as Surya, uh, J4, Loloy. Um, they have a lot of them. Surya has a huge collection, and they show them on their website. But Design Legacy has some really beautiful um, over-dyed ones. Um, those are some great sources for you, I think. Right. Um, Surya, go ahead. go ahead. Surya is your best bet, Krista. Yeah. Who is the Parsons Chair Designers? That was the one where I was showing you with the knotted pillows in that. That's Lancaster. Custom Works, and they just opened a new showroom in Market Square, but they're, I believe it's LancasterCustomWorks.com. You can Google them. Um, they had some really interesting things. Um, Surya, and that's spelled S-U-R-Y-A. And one other thing really quickly, let me get out of this, because you know what we failed to show, and um, I didn't have the slide in. And I want to show is with um, Paula. Somebody asked me about asked us about Paula. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, at her eight trend. o'clock this morning, we lost our whole side deck, and Deb, Deb had to <laughs> retrieve it. Which is Deb was like going crazy, going crazy, but we're good. We're yeah, good. I was going to show you some of her um, really quickly, guys. I know you don't mind me going through this. These are all those pictures. Here are. There we go. This is some of the trims that she's doing by the yard. And I have to tell you, the most expensive one is in the older pieces are these completely encrusted pearls. That's about four and a half inches wide. So you order these by the yard. You tell her what your cut lengths are so that you don't have to cut through the beads. Um, she spaces them based on your cut lengths. Um, you can do these in any width up to six inches. So I could do it, you know, I could do this as a six inch chevron, if you will. These, re these net at about $35 to $45 a yard. They also come imagine? on different substrates. Some of them are sheer, some of them are on linens. And I mean, really, uh, for the value With there. With all that customizability, that's amazing. Oh my God, here's, here's a piece. This is a ba that she banded. Look at these. These are um, placemats. This is all beading. So if you have a customer who, you know, if just w one little piece, right, or you want to do something down a leading edge, it, it's doable. These are and all leading Deb, edges. And she do custom patterns for you as well? Yep, yep. She'll yeah, also color right. them. You know, like if she's using gold wire and you want silver, she'll do that. She's um, really has some beautiful stuff. Um, this one is probably my favorite. Look at that. Yeah. Gorgeous. This is a cut work piece that you buy by the yard. This one obviously is more expensive, but look at the detail work on that. And does that not make a drapery? 
or I mean, placemats or pillow. I mean, anything. I mean, it makes a statement, you know, no matter what. It's gorgeous. Okay, so her name is Paula Queen, and her company is PR, and it's P-Y-A-R and company. You'll see her stuff online. Um, and she also has samples if you're wanting, if you're looking for trim. Price points on De Design Legacy's wall art. Great question, Melody. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I would say you need to check and see, but I mean, we've had people that went in and bought maybe like a 24 by 36 canvas original, and I, I want to say under $1,200. Oh, it was under... For, Oh, I think it was under okay. five. The the ones I was, was it? Okay. the ones that I were looking at those oh, that's, gold and dark indigos. Yeah. Those were like six seventy five. So so that's your wholesale. So I mean it's it's unbelievably um, affordable for those big pieces. Yeah. Right. And it, Even obviously the it's enormous on, giant pieces are really not um, bad if you're doing any kind of hospitality design. Or even residential, where you you know we've got these giant walls to fill sometimes. Yeah. Um, and he'll you can send him Benjamin Moore colors, and he'll work off of that, or a piece of fabric, or another piece of art that's going to hang in the room, and he can um, coordinate the colors. Now the Renaissance piece that was printed on canvas is much less ex expensive. They do yeah. um, they do those as panels. They do those as draperies, ready-made draperies. They'll do them um, as you know tapestries kind of thing with a rod at the top and the bottom. Um, so I know those are less expensive. Um, his website is designlegacy.com. And Melody, I'm not sure and, where you're at. And the bad at. thing about it, he really doesn't have a website yeah, that shows products. Kind of, yeah. And so he's one of those vendors, and you know, this is one of the reasons why Deb and I do these tours is that you really, you know, we say don't discount the power of being there, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's stuff you can only see at market. Right. Um, but you're one of the lucky ones, Mel Melody, because he is in, his corporate is in Dallas. So he has a Dallas showroom, I believe. Yeah. And um, you go out to his warehouse if you're in Dallas. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So he's he's a guy that you want to get to know. He's got some awesome stuff. Well, thanks everybody. Um, sorry we ran a little over, but we always love to chat with you online and answer your questions. And hopefully we'll be seeing you and when we're out and about, whether it's Las Vegas market or in October at High Point. So. Thanks, everybody. Have a good weekend. Thanks. Bye.